Hello everybody, I hope you are all well. It is so lovely to be back in my sewing room and this video is all about the construction of this design wall. It took me less than 45 minutes to put together. It was just under £45. Um, some of that money was spent on things that has gone into my storeroom that I'll be using in the future. So it's quite quick, quite inexpensive, and I'll show you how that came about. But first of all, I would just like to thank you all for your kind comments while I've been away. It was lovely to receive them. My sister, who lives in Spain, has just had a hip operation and she's now independent. She's up and around looking after herself and healing very well. So I've been out of the country for just over three weeks. I'm back and I'm ready to go. So the first thing I did was this sewing design wall. And while I was away, one of the uh, videos that I would pre-recorded and I've got to give myself a round of applause for that because I didn't know if that was going to work. Um, I, I'm not really very technically minded, but it came together and I was really chuffed. Every Friday I sat there an hour um, behind, so nine o'clock it was released Greenwich Mean Time here. And so 10 o'clock in Spain, I had a look and thinking, is it going to come out? Well, it did. And so that was all good. So we didn't mass miss any weeks, which was great. And your comments were lovely, like I say. And one of the videos I did say, I've made up my mind. I wanted to make a design wall. And I asked if anyone had any quick tips of how to put one together because I have this space of wall and it's blank and I had been just putting push pins into that wall with blocks on and I thought no I definitely am going to go for a design wall. So on one of the videos that I pre-recorded I asked if anybody had ever just put batting or flannel onto a wall just pinned it up or how how did they do that? Because I just wanted a quick and easy solution to do this. So I was tempted by a few options that you kindly sent me. There was one that I thought uh, I nearly went with and that was to use a vinyl or plastic tablecloth that had felt on the back. I thought the plastic and the vinyl would add a little bit more structure to the wall and, and to the fabric. And I would have gone with that because I did find a site that offered all different lengths so you could choose your length that you wanted. But you can't feel it, can you? And so the reviews were good, but I was a little bit uh, apprehensive about how thick it would be. So that's the reason I didn't go for that. Another really good one I had was if I wanted a portable wall was to have polystyrene blocks or sheets that had a hinge put down using gaffer tape or some sort of thick tape and then cover that in batting so that would be portable. Um, I don't really need to have a portable one but I was tempted with that and so in the end I went for a batting and I used this um, Hobbs heirloom and it's an 80-20 mix, 80% cotton, 20% poly uh, polyester. I normally use 100% cotton batting and sometimes because it's a natural product, sometimes it can be a little bit open in places or thicker in others. And so I thought if I went with that 20% polyester, it has a little scrim, so it gives it a little bit more strength. And so that's the one I used for that. I didn't go for the flannel because I thought, well, if this doesn't work, I've gone for the simplest and I've gone for the cheapest because if this doesn't work 
as the design wall, I can always take it down and use that batting in a quilt. It will be perfectly fine. It won't be dirty up there. So I'll be able to use that. And so I think I better just stop <laughs> jibber jabbering and show you how I made this design wall. So everything I need, I think, is in this box for this design wall. So let's open it and I'll show you what I've bought. And I just want to add that I'm not sponsored by any of the manufacturers or Amazon in this video or any other video. Um, I'm just sharing with you what goods I bought and I bought this on the day that I was flying home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was here when I got back. So that is the um, Amazon box. Okay. So for the batting on the wall, I've chosen this Hobbs Heirloom Premium Cotton Batting. It's an 80-20 mix. And I think that'll do the job. 81 inches by 96 inches, so that should be plenty. And then I'm just going to staple it to the wall. And to do that, I'll show you what I've got. There is a basic staple gun and a staple remover because I'm bound to need that aren't I? So I went for the T8 light model. I've put many of a display up in the classroom with these and they do the job. They're fine for what I'm hoping I'll be able to do here and it's a simple she says, can she recall? Yes. <laughs> so on the base, the simple pull back, put the staples in the base and then just click it up, close. So I'll do that next. And I did mention that I am um, not very technically minded, <laughs> but I did learn how to speed up the film on the video and I'm really pleased with the way that this comes together so you don't have to watch me laboriously putting in every staple on the wall. <laughs> it's quite heavy <laughs> and I feel like it wants to pull out of the staples. So I might get some card just to reinforce the edge, but I think that's okay. I want it to be quite taut, so I am pulling it quite tightly. There is a light switch here. <laughs> I was going to cut around this light switch, but actually I can just <laughs> still use it perfectly fine, so I might not. Now, to cut that edge, I think, um, decisions. And if you see any of the design boards that are made by people on YouTube that use insulation foam, they often cover those with batting and then they do put on some sort of border, either wooden or some sort of frame, just to keep that extra tight so I did go for the card. Okay I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some pieces of card and I'm going to put that right into the corner if I show you. So you can see in this corner that I can either try and cut a line which I don't think I'll do very successfully or if I cut some pieces of card and put that into the corner like a frame and then cut. I think that might work better. Well, I think we brought the hot weather back to the UK from Spain. It was so hot. And I might have mentioned before that the walls, the internal walls in this house are straw. So when it gets hot, it's really, really hard to cool down. We've got fans. We're probably, if we have longer spells of oppressive heat, 
we will sort of invest in some air conditioning. But at the moment, it's just a couple of days a year that we find it a little bit difficult. Um, but it, it was quite difficult on this day. But I just wanted to do it. And so I did. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me. I don't, I think this is past glowing. This is uh, definitely on the wet side now. It's 28 degrees and it's probably not the best time to do this, but um, I was just keen to get on and it arrived, so I've started. I'm going to have a look and see if I've got any card. I think the best thing to do is to try and find some card and put some slithers in the corner of the wall just to hold that and then I'll be able to cut it a little bit neater. So I'll get back to you. So I've just got some thin card and I am stapling that to the wall and I think it tidies up the edge and also will give a little bit more strength to the batting. I mean it's not the prettiest thing in the world but then um, if it does the job I'm happy with that so I'm going to carry on doing that all the way around and I'll show you when I've finished I'm watching the footage of this video back as I'm recording this so that I can add little <laughs> golden nuggets of information and really I mean why didn't I stop there I was obviously struggling in the heat but um and the dress, <laughs> it was a gift from my husband. All these tassely things. He won't watch this video, but um, probably not the best attire for working in, but we'd just taken my mother-in-law out for lunch and that's why I'm wearing that dress. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it got even hotter. It hit 30 degrees. But I'd started, so I was determined to finish. Well, I've brought a fan in <laughs> to try and help. It's not helping. <laughs> I'm going to have a shower in a minute. But that card around the edge is definitely holding it taut. The corner now is getting a little bit ugly. So I'm just going to trim away that edge and put the card down. Well, that's it finished it's taken exactly 45 minutes it feels taut enough I think I can get some blocks to go on to that I managed to sort out that not too bad around the corner and then there's a light switch here and I'm just leaving that covered I can still work that and then just down here I put a little bit of card around the plug socket so that I can use my iron. Okay, let's try some blocks. And so the first thing that's going to grace my design wall is this little bag of scraps. It is for project liners and it's something I've been putting together as I've been finishing quilts and I've had oddments left over. So let's get it on the wall and have a look. So I've sewn together all of these half square triangles in a sort of hourglass design and to be honest with you I haven't ironed that and when I've just tried to put it on the wall it won't stick so I have put a couple of pins so I didn't need to use many I've got one in the top corner and one in the middle so perhaps if I iron this it might stick better. So some of you might hear that little um, touch of disappointment in my voice. I just thought whatever I threw at that wall was going to stick. It didn't work like that. I haven't yet ironed that so that might stick without pins but um, we'll see how we get on. Well, the small half square triangles, they're three inches square that I've made to complete those hourglass shapes. They're all sticking okay to the batting. 
Oh, that's okay. I'm happy with that now. I found some odd blocks and they I can just press those against the batting and they're staying there. So I think perhaps that first one is... There's too many seams that aren't flat to stop that working. So, early days, but so far I think I'm going to call this a success. And so, tell me what you think. I think it should work. Like I say, if if it starts to get baggy or it comes away from the wall, I can always add a couple more staples. And if the worst comes to the worst, I do have a staple remover and I do have a staple gun in my possession now. So I can always take it off and try another way of making a design wall. But if it just lasts me a season then, and then I'll use it in something else, I'll be happy. There's enough fabric uh, that I've cut off from the edge of the wall that I can put together to make a Project Linus quilt. So there's enough there. So yeah, for less than, well, about £45. And like I say, I've got a staple gun and I also have a staple remover now. So they're in my possession. So those are things I've kept. And not a bad 45 minutes work. So I think that's it for this week. Um, I've got some paperwork to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. My intention uh, from now on is to have a good look at the fabric in my sewing room and I want to just work through and make quilts with what I've got if I can. I do have ideas um, to make quilts with fabric that I haven't bought but I am going to the Festival of Quilts and I have saved some pennies for some fabric for there. So I don't really want to buy any more fabric until then. So if you are still with me and fancy a go at making a design wall like this or have any comments to make, please do chat amongst yourselves if you like to. It's lovely to read your comments and I will see you next week. Thank you very much and take good care of yourselves. Bye.